Russian military man Yegor Guzenko, who runs the Zblog 13th, again criticized the Putin regime. He accused the authorities of paying miserable salaries to air defense forces, border guards, and marines on gas rigs in the Black Sea. Guzenko stated that the Russian authorities treat their own soldiers as best they can. Vladimir Vladimirovich, pay attention to this unfair situation. On the Krim 2 platform, there are marines, related units, pilots. Not only are they performing incomprehensible tasks of guarding Gazprom's scrap metal, they are suffering terrible losses. And at the same time, they are not paid the salaries of the SVO participants. What kind of pig policy is this? Where is the justice? And at the same time, state Duma deputies receive such salaries that they are mother-in-law. They do not know what yacht to buy, the Russian military man said. He also complained that the Kremlin had made soldiers recruited in the first wave of mobilization into serfs. They are being forced to fight to the end of the so-called SVO, which is not expected in the near future. Earlier, Z Occupier 13th is threatening Putin with an uprising. 13th was especially outraged by the situation in the Kursk region where the Ukrainian armed forces took Russian troops into operational encirclement. In the fighting in this area, the Z blogger lost a close friend, captain of the Russian armed forces, Artem Matul. Here in the Kursk region in Sudza, the bridges of the Ukrainian armed forces were destroyed all around, and ours were building pontoon bridges. Tima died, Artem Vladimirovich, Matul, a captain. And if we had destroyed all the bridges to the Ukrainians at the very beginning, there would have been no weapon supplies there. Everything ended there a long time ago. But we do everything the other way around. How wrong! It's a shame to the depths of our souls. We once believed in all this and went to war. And we honestly fought for all this. And the Russian authorities were having fun at this time, organizing seminars and negotiations. What is happening now is all betrayal. Traitors are sitting in the Kremlin. Planes are crashing. Explosions are happening. Inconvenient people are being removed, are being put in prisons. We must understand that when we return from the front, the war will not be over for us. Traitors have captured the country. There are many of us. We are a whole country. And there is a bunch of you sitting there. You are old. You will soon die, Guzenko said. Four Russian journalists went on trial in Moscow on Wednesday on charges over their alleged work for a group founded by the late Russian opposition politician Alexei Navalny. Antonina Faverskaya, Artyom Kriger, Sergei Karolin and Konstantin Gabov all deny the charges of involvement with an extremist group that have been levied against them. Faverskaya and Kriger worked with Sodavision, an independent Russian news outlet that covers protests and political trials. Gabov is a freelance producer who has worked for multiple organizations, including Reuters. Carolyn is a freelance video journalist, he has done work for Western media outlets, including the Associated Press. As the four journalists were led into the courtroom by police on Wednesday, a crowd of supporters greeted them with applause. Addressing reporters from behind the glass, Artyom Krieger cast the case against him and his fellow journalists as a cautionary tale and urged journalists still in Russia to leave the country. Antonina Faverskaya spoke about hope and suggested that, everything that is happening now, the darkness that surrounds us, it is not forever and we will definitely see the country that Alexei dreamed of and will definitely live in a country where there will be freedom, rights, where journalists and other people will not be jailed for their opinions. Shortly after the hearing began, the judge ordered to hold the proceedings behind closed doors upon a request from the prosecution, even though the defense objected to it. If convicted, the four journalists face up to six years in prison. Смотря видео, вся законодательная база сделана так, что 
она считает экстремистскую. Мы еще до суда на стадии следствия уже были внесены Росфинмониторингом список террористов экстремистов. Мы не в такой цивилизованной стране, где есть экстремные власти, когда такое происходит, уже суд не может начинаться априори, потому что один из органов исполнительной власти на сдос судебного избирательства уже признает де юра и де факто экстремистами и террористами. Но мой вам совет под камерой, давайте не будем давать шанса. Нельсон Андрилл просидел в тюрьме 27 лет. И он пришел и сам президент, так что надежда есть. Пожалуйста, никогда не забывайте об этом, что история, она повторяется. И... То, что происходит сейчас, то тьма, которая нас окружает, это не навсегда. И мы обязательно увидим ту страну, которую мечтал Алексей, мы обязательно, обязательно будем жить в той стране, где будут свободы, права, и где журналисты и другие люди не будут съездить свое мнение, не будут съездить то, что они не хотят этой войны, не будут съездить за то, что у нас сейчас такая власть. Или сколько нас съездил на солнце? Как тебе удается оставаться такой красивой? За решеткой ты выглядишь в камеру.